In this video, I'm going to go over the configuration management of the Palo Alto Network's firewall. When I was studying for the PCNSA, I had to know about the different operations that the firewall used to maintain the firewall configuration. And there were different operations like save, revert, load, and there's others as well. So before we get into those operations, though, I did want to talk about the two configuration stores that you should be familiar with. That is the first, the candidate configuration, which is kept on the control plane memory, which means it is not a persistent um, configuration. If you reload the firewall, those pending changes that you're making are kept on the candidate configuration and they can be wiped after a reboot. So these changes are not yet applied yet to the firewall and they need to be committed. And so on the top right, there's a little commit button. You are committing your changes that are kept on this candidate configuration, which will then be applied to the firewall. And those changes can be kept on a, on a file called snapshot.xml. So that's the candidate configuration. When you're making changes, you're making changes and keeping them on a candidate configuration. They're not yet active but they need to be made active when you commit. The other file is called the running configuration. Now the running configuration lives in the data plane memory of the firewall. So it is in persistent storage, meaning when the firewall is rebooted, the firewall will then read this running configuration file. So it's the active configuration. It's what the firewall uses for operations. And that file is called the running-config.xml. So those are the two configuration files that you really should be aware of when you're managing the firewall, operating on it. So why don't we just dive right into the firewall and talk about or look at the different operations that you can do with the configuration. So if you navigate, after you log in, navigate to the device at the top, and then on the left, click on setup, and then click on operations. Right here in the middle, you can see a configuration management section, and I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. These are the different operations on the firewall for configuration management. You have revert, save, load, export, and import. The first operation I'm going to go into is the save operation. And you can see there's, there's always two different operations within the, the main operation here. So there's save named configuration snapshot. All this is going to do is take your candidate configuration. I'm going to click on it and then you can name it whatever you want. So I can call this, um, Maybe, maybe we're applying a big change to the firewall and we, we want to keep these changes in a, in a saved file. So instead of snapshot.xml, I'm going to call it big change before friday.xml. Once you do that, you click OK. Why didn't it like that? Let's see. There you go. I don't know. I didn't like it the first time, but I did save it. So it, now that file, that candidate configuration is saved as a separate file that I can refer to in the future. Now, the other option is if you're, if you're making pending changes, you can just save your candidate configuration to the snapshot.xml file. And so if I have changes here, I can just save it. Now, this is just saving it to that snapshot.xml file that you see right there, but it has not yet been committed. That is what the save operation does. Now, when we look at the load operation, again, you can load a named configuration snapshot. So once I click here, I can select a name that I want to, a name configuration. You can see that I've have, I have a few here and we have the big change before friday.xml file that we had saved earlier. You can click on that and then just hit OK and it will load that into the candidate configuration. Once you load the name configuration, you still have to commit those changes to apply it to the running configuration. 
The other useful, um, uh, another useful way to use load name configuration is when we get to the import operation. You can import a file and then from here load that file and and apply it to the firewall. All right, so that's the named configuration snapshot. There's also the load configuration version, and this is a useful um, way to select a different uh, configuration that, that was used previously. So my firewall has a few saved uh, configuration snapshots, but it's not very useful because it just has a number, a date, and a timestamp. I don't really know what configuration changes were applied or or made here so you, you can select one click ok actually i'm gonna go back to maybe let, let's do this i'll hit cancel let's look at my policies real quick because i think i have one all right so if we look at these are my policies that i have here on my lab firewall you can see there's six rules all right so i'll go back to device uh, set up and operations and then I'll load a configuration version. I'll go back to another day in the morning where I hopefully made a configuration change here. So the configuration is being loaded, right? Again, it's just loaded. So if we look at tasks, we can see that the load is now complete. So if I go back to my policies, let's see if anything has been applied. I don't see anything and and this is where i had some trouble understanding how the load operation works now if i go to the commit at the top right i'm going to just see what those changes are because you can preview the changes so here we are going to go preview changes i'll click ok on the lines of context and it's going to compare the running configuration with the candidate so there's nothing different <laughs> with the configuration that I loaded. So that was probably a bad um, example. Now I can go back and go to load version configuration and maybe pick one that has a change that I could take a look at. So configuration has been loaded. I'll click close. I know I made a change and added a policy previously, but I don't see it here. And that's that's the problem I have with the load versioned conf configuration because i don't know what change is in any of those but here you can see i did a preview of the changes so let, there is a difference so you can see in my running configuration here on the left side this is what it's showing is different because in the candidate configuration i'm adding this block I icmp to 1.1.1.1 and that's what's currently stored in the configuration. Right now, I should be able to ping this IP address. But once I apply and commit this configuration, it will then add that here in the rules. So if I reload, I don't know if it will show it to us before we actually apply it. That's the one thing that I was not sure about the load configuration. It didn't really show me anything. There it is at the top. I don't know. Maybe I just missed it when we were looking at it earlier because I thought I, I had put, placed it down here at the bottom, but maybe I moved it to the top. Uh, but there it is. It's, it's in candidate configuration, right? So that's loading a version, uh, a configuration version. You're selecting one from a list of previously saved uh, uh, candidate configurations. Now, the export operation is, is a nice... Uh, operation to have because you could store your configuration off of the firewall. So you can click on export name to configuration. On the drop down, you're gonna you can select candidate config, which has not been applied to your firewall yet, or you can choose to export your current running config. And this is useful for if you need an, to load this configuration on another firewall. You can see that these are in XML format. So you select the, the configuration you want, click OK, and it will save it to your desktop. Then you can import that into another firewall for testing purposes, or maybe you're just um, pre-configuring another firewall with some template rules that you have. That's one way to use the export operation. Now the export configuration version, again, just goes 
with a drop down list of just different versions that have been saved. I don't know what those are. You would have to go and inspect the XML file after you export it to see what those changes, what those changes are. And the other uh, operation I had mentioned import. Now, if you're on a firewall that's brand new, has no configuration, you could go in to here and import a named configuration file. So you had exported it. Now you're going to import it, select it from your computer, click OK. But once it's imported, it does not apply that configuration to the firewall. You actually then have to go to load and load that named configuration snapshot, which will then put it into the candidate configuration. From there, you then commit those changes. So that's the import. Now, the one thing I want to show you uh, last is the revert, because revert works a little bit differently than the other operations. So let's say I'm working on this firewall and I'm making a ton of changes, right? Maybe, uh, maybe I, uh, I don't know, delete this rule here and I say, yes, I want to delete that block ICMP rule. It's going to be gone. I made a bunch of devices. I went and left and got lunch and I, and I came back and I said, oh, um, I don't even know what changes I made and I'm afraid to apply it as an example, right? So I can say, um, you know, I want to revert to the last, um, to, the, to the running config, whatever is currently running on this firewall. So once you click on that, it is a one click action right here. So it's, it's saying, do you really want to revert to the running configuration? Once you hit yes, it will just load the running configuration, right? So there you go. Confi configuration is, re is being reverted. You check this task um, manager here. So you can see that the revert is completed. It was relatively quick. I don't have much on this firewall. So let's see, if I go back to policies, will that block ICMP be there? No, it's not. So it's just lo it loaded just what was on this fire, um, the running config. Uh, now, if I go to revert to last saved configuration, again, another um, one-click operation. This will uh, load the snapshot.xml configuration. So if I click on yes, it's being reverted. Let's see, does that policy come back? No, because I did not save that config. So it's really useful for, you know, maybe some accidental changes you're making. Um, so if I go here, I'm going to say, you know, this is a good configuration. I'm going to save this candidate configuration that I have right now. Like, actually, we, we can make that change, right? So if, if I go into my firewall rules, I'll, s I don't know, maybe let's just enable one of these, right? This one's disabled. We're going to enable rule five. Right, I'm going to go to device right now. That's that's kept in the candidate configuration file. So I'm going to say save candidate configuration. And and a lot of times I always have this confusion between what these operations actually mean, especially with revert, because you still have to commit. If you load a configuration or import revert, you still have to commit those changes afterwards, right? So if I go back here now and just, you know, I, I said, you know what? I want to delete that rule. That's currently in the candidate configuration pending changes, right? But it's not saved. So if I click on revert to last saved configuration, I'll click on yes. Now let's see if that rule has been reapplied. And there it is, see? It just put it back because that was the last saved configuration. So those are our operations right there, your configuration management operations. Uh, you should know what these operations are and how they work for the PCNSA exam and uh, understand how or when you should actually use these operations. So if you have access to a firewall, uh, a, a lab firewall, I, I'd say, is test out these operations and really understand how they work. Because again, I, I reverted 
right to the last saved configuration but those changes have not been applied so if i click on commit we can see preview changes before i actually commit my changes and it should show us there you go that rule that i had removed and it was disabled in the running configuration now it's this it's, it was disabled in the running configuration now i set it to not disabled all right so those are our op configuration management operations i hope you enjoyed this video and um, that you found it useful if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and i'll see you in the next one thanks guys